All right, Pierce, I'm making a video. Um, let's see if the resolution is correct. Yes, it is. Okay, this is the low resolution on a uh, Kodak uh, ZI6. Yeah, kind of like these cameras. Um, anyway, so this is the low resolution, and later I'll do the HD. It's actually got two HD settings, kind of annoying. Um, anyway, hopefully I put a big enough card in. Yeah, I did for this, I think. All right, anyway, um, yeah, uh, all right, uh, first off, you know, I was, I was taking apart some, um, computer batteries, I mean, I ordered some dead ones, and, um, you know, they're just these cells inside, you know, they're like twice as big as A cells, like here's an A, double A, and so, well, all right, three times bigger, um, you know, these are two of them stuck together. Um, but it's kind of annoying because you just think about all the money they get. And they're just basically batteries. I mean, they're batteries inside of a little box. And, uh, you know, if they just went with the standardized batteries, they all got the same kind of cells they use inside of them, the same lithium 3.7 volt cells. And, uh, yeah, just a lot of wasted money, you know, because these dead batteries only had one or two dead cells in them. The other cells still were useful. You know, they still probably got a year's worth of life in them. And uh, so it's a complete waste, uh, filling landfills full, landfills full of batteries that shouldn't be there because they still have useful capacity. Um, yeah, it's just a way of ripping people off. That's all it is. This proprietary batteries is just bullshit. It should be standardized. And these are the kind of things, these are the kind of things where some force has got to step in and say, no, we're going to have a standard for this shit. Uh, we're not going to be stupid and preposterous and wasteful. I mean, it's just bullshit. Um, it's just bullshit. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to do some Thunderfoot videos, a bunch of them. And uh, I think I'll devote each one to an element. So this will be hydrogen, the first one. <laughs> so... I don't know how I'll title it. Maybe I'll just title the video Hydrogen. That'll confuse everybody. Um, yeah, that's what I'll do. So anyway, um, basically the argument here is is there's, these, there's this... Sorry about the shaking. Um, these people argue um, against creationists. And they're, you know, they're this theory that a god created the universe, basically. Yeah, bullshit. Um, but they do it from a perspective where they think, you know whatever, 118 elements, um, 19, I don't know what it is, but anyway, um, yeah, like, um, their properties somehow had built into them, uh, the wisdom to make everything come out all right in the end, that the life fairy tale is all okay, because those 118 elements knew how to combine the right way, and just because it's consumption and reproduction at its roots, evolution, nothing else, no compassion built in, no wise efficiency. Uh, you know, on planet Earth, uh, you know, dumb alligators are eating smart orangutans and such. Um, it's a stupid, idiotic world. It's not beautiful, it's dumb. And so if you're going to be an atheist, you're going to have to accept the fact that we live in shit. That the whole concept is shit. And if you're arguing otherwise, you're going to have to explain how those... 118 elements figured out how to do it right when they didn't have any rule book they don't have any brain they're just properties combination properties I mean they can combine with each other and that's all and it's just about survivable combinations and through a DNA molecule they can get really eccentric but it's still just combinations of elements so anyway so anyway, I'm going to play, I'm starting with his list of his most popular videos. And they're all kind of old videos, I noticed. Two years old, you know, this one's three years old. Number one. So I never watched any of this crap. So why do people laugh at creationists? So, you know, the new title will be, Why Do People Laugh at um, Elementarists? Our um, Beauty in the Universe is our phantasmagorical um, silly people who uh, ridicule um, people spouting nonsense while they spout nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Loading the video. It's very exciting, isn't it? Are you excited and such? Why do people... Look at this. Uh, video dump bots. When I was <laughs> that bots. there was a worldwide flood, uh, I, I get laughed at. I get laughed at. I get laughed at. 
but this planet is covered. All right, now right there. Now, now what the hell is that? Is that how scientists do videos? They um, take somebody else's content, which is okay if you're going to do education and commentary, or if you're going to do satire or parody. Now, this isn't going to be a satire or a parody. Um, and the bottom line is, is you really can't do it if your intent is to malign, uh, to slander, to um, libel, to um, do something other than that educational type thing. I mean, if you're doing something else, um, if that's your intent, is to basically um, do cheap ridicule, and that's what this is, uh, yeah, this isn't fair use, asshole. I, you know, it's mock use, and that's not, I don't think that's covered under copyright law. It doesn't say anything about the right to mock with somebody else's property. Mock them with their own property. No, I don't think that's in the fucking law, uh, Mr. PhD. It's just a cheap motherfucking tactic. Even if it wasn't illegal, it's cheap. Three-fourths in water. If the planet flooded like the Bible says, the Grand Canyon could have been formed in about five minutes. This is why they this get... This is a geographical map of the United States. The oh, fuck. What are you using for a microphone, uh, Mr. PhD? I mean, this is fucking horrible. This is the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is about 300 miles long. In order to travel from one end of the canyon to the other in five minutes, it is required that you would be traveling at about five to six times the speed of sound. Oh, gee. Now, it, and see, now, isn't that a kind of a cheap, lamey argument? I mean, he says five minutes. I'm sure God didn't say five minutes into his ear. He was just making up a number, so he used five minutes. I guess what he was implying, that God could fucking cut a Grand Canyon. Look, if you're God, the speed of light is irrelevant, okay? It doesn't matter. None of that shit matters, all right? So if you're going to accept the premise that a God is possible in the first place, then you have to accept the premise that the God could do whatever the hell he wants. So this is just a bullshit argument anyway. The Grand Canyon could have been formed in about five minutes. I get laughed at for in about five minutes. Oh, there you go again. I mean, it, that is just so fucking disgusting. So this is what you made your subscriber base out of. This is what gets 1,100,032,000 vote uh, 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 views. A fucking cheap video. I mean, no, I mean, this is, I had no idea this is the crap you were putting on the fucking internet. Mr. PhD. So it takes a PhD to use this kind of cheap tactic uh, to uh, 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 make an argument. Get laughed at. Honestly. Scientists have been desperately trying to find water on other planets. However, the search is futile. Well, not really. There was the Mars Global Surveyor probe, which has found evidence that water has been flowing on Mars within the last five years. Then, of course, there's the Mars Express probe, which has taken pictures of water ice on Mars and revealed massive deposits of water ice under the Martian poles. <laughs> yeah, water ice? Well, that's the other trick there, isn't it? Okay, yeah, it's really ice is... You know, I think we already know there's ice. I think Venom Fang X knows there's ice. There's freaking moons flying around Saturn or something that are all covered with ice and methane and all kinds of other frozen shit. And there's the Cassini-Huygens probe that has taken pictures of water ice on Titan. Three of the four large Jovian moons are composed mostly of water. It is likely that Europa has oceans under the frozen surface created by tidal heating from Jupiter, similarly with Ganymede and Callisto. Almost all the moons of Saturn, Uranus and Neptune are ice balls too, as are most of the comets. It's difficult to contrive that anyone could make a more uneducated statement on the status of water in the solar system than... Scientists have been desperately trying to find water on other planets. However, the search is futile. Yeah, well, I guess the, the, the game is is they haven't found water in, like, a liquid ocean on another planet, you know? So, I mean, an ocean underneath ice that is, you know, whatever, two billion miles from the sun... It isn't likely to be producing anything. 
We never underestimate the stupidity of it, ignorance of the creation is. Here we go. Yet this planet, this amazing planet, just so happens to have, you know, 100% of the water in the whole solar system. Well, let's ignore for the moment the water on Mars, the gas. Yeah, well, let's just ignore that it's just whatever. I mean, this is what this is the kind of thing you're going to argue about is because some kid, um, you know, argues a dumb point. Um, you know, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I just don't see it. I just don't. This isn't the the. It just doesn't. I don't see how this is even relevant to. I mean, I don't know who's who is not a who is a creationist because of water or who's a who believes in evolution because of water I mean it just isn't really relevant to the argument Giants let's ignore the water on the moons of Jupiter Saturn Uranus and Neptune <laughs> and let's ignore that they're way 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 far away from the Sun so low energy and um, they're all frozen and cold and lots of other shit let's ignore all Cuba belt objects such as Pluto Sedna and of course all the comets Here's an interesting thing about water. Uh, where did it all come from? We can't find, like, a, a speck of H2O in outer space. Is there still no water in the universe? Bollocks. Water is the... <laughs> yeah, bollocks. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so this is what the video is about. So he said something stupid, and you called him on it, and it's sort of a irrelevant point, in my opinion. The second most common molecule in the universe. The reason for this is simple. The elemental composition of the universe by atom percent is about 92 percent hydrogen. Ah, yes, exactly. And this video is devoted to hydrogen. Burns invisible, practically. And uh, what else? It burns quick. Yeah. So like the people in the Hindenburg, they really didn't get burned by the hydrogen. They got burned by the fuselage and shit that melted on them. But a lot of them survived. Except helium. The third most common element in the universe is oxygen, and there's less than one atom percent of it. Helium, of course, doesn't form any compounds, so the most common molecule... <laughs> of course. Oh, of course it doesn't. Of course. I mean, yeah, that's sort of interesting news. I don't think everybody knows that. Helium doesn't form any compounds. It doesn't combine with anything. It's completely isolated and alone. Hmm. Maybe I ought to write it out of my house in the universe is hydrogen, H2. The second most common molecule in the universe is H2O, water. I get wafted. Oh, there you did it again. Playing with his fucking video. That is just so slimy. There is a small zone around every star called the habitable zone, where liquid water is possible. Our Earth happens to be in a perfectly spherical orbit around our star. <laughs> wow, that was really bad. You know, it is, I, I don't know where he gets his information from, but man, that was pretty dumb. So now he's going to pick on him because, oh no, the orbit isn't perfectly round. It's, it's, it's obtuse. <laughs> a spherical orbit around our star. The Earth's orbit is not a perfect sphere. It's not a sphere. It's not even a circle. Oh, gee, I just keep going on and on about that. Well, you know what? Um, yeah, the, you know, beauty is, an, is a completely subjective, erroneous concept, and you shouldn't even say the word if you're a scientist. You should stay the frig away from it, because it's just a silly word, okay? You like pretty colors, little sparklies. Uh, I mean, it's nonsense. It's drivel. Um, it's like talking about flavors of ice cream or something. It is not a scientific investigation. The Earth's orbit around the Sun, like all planetary orbits, is elliptical. <sighs> and this has been known for about 400 years. Wow, so you really caught him on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I get laughed at. However, if the Earth was a mere 5% closer to our Sun, we would cook like Venus. Now, if our Earth was a few percent away from our Sun... By a few percent, you fail to mention that this is 37%. This is about 50 billion meters, almost out as far as Mars. I get laughed Uh, well, percentages do seem a little bit irrelevant. 
but uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I mean, what, you're going to argue that if the Earth was, it wouldn't take much. <laughs> you know, move it a little bit here, move it a little there, and the whole game changes, so that's a valid argument. The Grand Canyon could have been formed in about five minutes, yet this planet, this amazing planet, just so happens to have, you know, 100% of the water in the whole solar system. We can't find, like, a, a speck of H2O in outer space. Our Earth happens to be in a perfectly spherical orbit around our star. So anyway, that was it. So, so the big uh, I gotcha uh, is this mush. Um, some, you know, get a few facts wrong kind of thing. And I'm sure we can't catch any scientists doing that, right? Like NASA releasing statements about, um, you know, living organisms that um, have arsenic incorporated into their DNA. No, I don't I don't think legitimate scientists could be wrong. Oh, maybe they can be. Hmm. Maybe sometimes they talk out of their ass. They misspeak. Yeah. So anyway. Okay, this is enough for a first try. Uh so yeah, overall this is not a, a million view type video. It's pretty lame, silly really obnoxious actually in how it's done and it's just sort of petty yeah that's it it's fucking petty it's a petty little um, hatchet job that's what it is it's a fucking hatchet job uh, a PhD with a little he's got his little hatchet like a little boy scout and he went out and decided to go take a, some wax at some silly little creationist trees um, yeah and that's all it is Pretty bad. Pretty poor performance, I say. That's what I say. Alright, anyway. Um, yeah, so that's enough of a video. Uh, yeah, well, the point is, again, like I said, that all we've got here is these elements. Their capacity to combine with each other to create compounds that have their own properties. And um, what happened in life is that one of these compounds got incorporated into a reproduction process, DNA. Um, blueprint process, if you want to call it that, and uh, yeah, it evolved over a few billion years with no more guidance than the theory of evolution and natural selection, which was survival of the fittest by the crudest standard imaginable. All right, doesn't have anything to do. Nature doesn't give a shit about how smart you are, how anything you are. Tomorrow, a virus could show up and wipe us all the hell out. A dumb, stupid piece of you know, chemistry, a little tiny speck of something could could wipe us all out tomorrow, could kill every living thing on the planet. Um, oh, maybe he's going to hold me to that. Yeah, but I think it's theoretically possible, actually, um, that uh, such, a, such a, a thing could happen. So anyway, till next time and such and whatnot and so forth. Yeah, 18 minutes, kind of a long video, but... That's alright. You can stand it. So I'm going to hit the button now. Here I go. Hang the button.